Hello and welcome to another video from Double Real. This video is about how to resurrect a old uh, Triang Trenta. So um, a lot of people uh, inherit these things from various different locations, whether it's uh, grandparents and uncle, father, um, brothers, sisters, and like that. Um, you also have folks who want to dust them off for their grandkids um, or their kids or even their great grandkids. Um, so oftentimes these things have been left uh, unrun for years, or even possibly decades. Um, so this is just a, a quick video uh, to walk you through how to uh, resurrect the thing. And as you can see here, it's uh, definitely possible to resurrect these old train sets. Um, the one that's going around right now. It's a, uh, looks to be a class 101 DMU and uh, it's not doing too bad at all. Uh, you can also see there we have the uh, blue Pullman set, uh, one of the class 77s, uh, Nelly and uh, a uh, class uh, 31. So um, basically what we're going to do is uh, walk you through the steps of what we did uh, here and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so before we begin, um, I wanted to take a few seconds uh, just to make a few comments about safety. Um, first of all, if you can hear that controller, uh, it's got a, a wicked uh, electrical hum to it, um, and it's in pretty good neck. It's uh, probably from you know late 1950s, early 1960s, so it's a um, you know it's a good. 50, 60 years old, so just like any 60 year old piece of electrical equipment um, that doesn't have any kind of grounding associated with it, you need to use a little bit of common sense. So um, you want to make sure that you try to avoid touching the metal parts of it while it's turned on and um, just in general try not to uh, short the thing out uh, if you can avoid it. Uh, if you don't own a fire extinguisher, it may be a good idea to at least invest in one of those small ones that you can put in your car or um, you know one of those twenty thirty dollar ones that you can pick up at Walmart. Um, we have one here that's sitting right underneath the uh, the layout here just in case um, something goes wrong. Um, so you want to try to avoid uh, electrocuting yourself and try to avoid uh, setting your house on fire. And uh, trust me, it's a lot easier than you think to do either. Um, so with that said, uh, you can hear the electrical hum going on there. Now you don't have to use a uh, old power controller like I'm using here. Uh, there's a good chance that you might want to, or that you that's all you have, because that's what came with the, the set that you either inherited or you, you dug out of your, your loft. Um, but just be careful, uh, I wanted to put that in there before we uh, went any further. So when dealing with old uh, Triang track and, and train sets, uh, you'll either have uh, something like this, which is uh, Series 3 track, or you'll have something like this, which is uh, Super 4 track. And if I show my camera side by side, you can see they uh, look similar. But uh, the Super 4 track has basically more uh, sleepers for the same length of rail. And uh, usually I think the uh, Super 4 track may actually be brown. It looks like the uh, Series 3 track is black. Um, they have uh, fish blades or rail joiners on there that typically tend to rust. Um, and that's usually going to be and where your connectivity from the electrical point uh, kind of breaks down. Um, but the good news is you can connect uh, Super 4 and Series 3 track together. Unfortunately, uh, you cannot connect easily. Um, the Super 4 track 
or series three track to modern day track and if I kind of put the two together you can see that the uh, camera's going to focus there or not but the uh, Super 4 track is a lot higher than the uh, regular track and uh, that difference in rail height is it's almost double so um, that won't work now um, somebody on YouTube actually put together a uh, I think they filed down or sanded down um, a piece of Super 4 or Series 3 track so that you could go between it and code 100 track and, and that's something you can do um, but I would highly recommend uh, avoiding that if you're just trying to get the, the set working uh, at least uh, initially so um, usually uh, what you're gonna have is uh, some kind of oval uh, if you have all the track that's left uh, from your train set uh, usually the oval will look something like this and you can see here this is a uh, Super 4 Triang Hornby uh, track pack and it actually adds the uh, passing loop to the oval so um, basically it's not that hard to, to resurrect one of these things um, what you need to do uh, first is uh, basically inspect the track that you have and uh, try to set up uh, some kind of initially small loop or circle uh, just to make sure that you have enough track to do it and that the track that you have actually works um, you want to try to avoid using track that's rusty um, and if you don't have enough track you should be able to pick up some of it on eBay pretty easily um, also your local model shop may may have some uh, and if anybody has a model shop that has a ton of the Super 4 Series 3 track, please feel free to comment on this video below. Um, but other than that, it's it's pretty straightforward. So the first thing I want to do is go through the track that you have, make sure it's uh, not rusty, uh, make sure that none of the uh, fish plates are broken, and um, put together a track that you, that you have. If you have extra pieces, you can uh, get a little adventurous like we have here and, and add some sidings and maybe a passing loop. Um, but initially, uh, you just want to plug it together and uh, make sure that it connects, make sure there's no big gaps, uh, make sure all the fish plates um, connect together. So if I zoom in here um, on the track, see if we can zoom in, uh, you can see that we've uh, nailed it in place. And before you nail it in place, you may want to run it at least uh, a couple of times to make sure that it does still um, work. But we're going to zoom in here to one of the uh, joints just so you can see that there's no, no gaps there. And that's basically what you're looking for. You can see there at the bottom there's a little bit of a gap, but not, not a whole lot. Then connecting power, um, the best way I found to connect power to it is to solder directly to the rail. Now Series 3 and um, Super 4 track have uh, some kind of coating um, that makes it hard to actually solder to it. So um, what I've done this time around uh, from past experience is uh, basically taken a track pin and scratched the um, area where I want to actually apply the solder and then uh, cover that area with uh, solder flux apply a strip of solder to it uh, solder and tin the wire and then uh, you should be able to attach the wire to the track without too much difficulty and obviously you do that on, on both sides and usually the older controllers you don't need to solder it to the controller you can see there we simply attached it via a screw and uh, you can see there that's the Triang Lion Brothers controller. It's in a very nice uh, condition. Picked that up off of eBay. And you can see some of the uh, Triang locos that we have here. We have the Class 77, uh, Nelly, the Blue Pullman, there's a Dock Shunter and Princess Elizabeth uh, there. There's a Class 31. So once you have the uh, track uh, put together, um, the first thing you really need to do is to uh, test it. 
Now, uh, depending on what you have, um, I would recommend either using something like a dock shunter or uh, Nelly uh, for, for testing the track. Um, that's um, basically what my dad used to do when uh, he uh, reset up the layout uh, when I was a kid. Uh, he'd take uh, something like the dock shunter or Nelly um, and, and just run it. Uh, he does use to use the Jinty as well, works uh, works pretty well. But you just want to use a, a small locomotive um, so that you can make sure that um, you know it, the track works. And also if there's any problems with the controller, if it blows up something like uh, Nelly or, or a dock shunter, um, it, it's not as bad as it's say blowing up something like the blue Pullman there. Um, but that's, uh, that's basically uh, all you need to do. So we're going to show you what we did next, which was to uh, you know, once the track's all plugged together, run your, your test train around it a few times. Uh, you want to look for any spots where the test train might be slowing down, and which is why the dock shunter is pretty good because you can actually watch the light. And that'll give you an idea of where you want to clean with the track eraser. Um, so we go use the, the track eraser in a few places and until you get the train basically running around the loop um, the way you want it. And then uh, if you're just uh, doing this on the kitchen table, you don't really need to nail down the track. If you're doing it on the baseboard like we have here, it's probably a good idea at that point to, to nail down the track before you start cleaning it. Um, now what we did to clean the track is use uh, two Class 20s on a CMX track cleaner. And uh, since this track hasn't been used probably in decades, um, we figured it wasn't overkill to do that. And uh, it actually took, uh, couple of minutes of using the CMX cleaner and we actually had to use it twice to uh, get all the dirt off and even then I still had to use uh, some kitchen towel to uh, just uh, get the, the rest of the dirt off the track but it, it worked pretty well and you can see there uh, the track is looking uh, pretty shiny and um, that's basically it I mean uh, once you've got the oval working and uh, you got the uh, the test train running on it okay, you can start running some of your, your better rolling stock on it. Uh, so for us it was like the uh, Blue Pullman and the Class 31 and the uh, 101 DME there. And um, you know, it works pretty well. Now a couple of times, uh, a couple of problems we ran into was the uh, points there when the train uh, crossed the points after a few times it would actually stop dead. and. Uh, it was easy to troubleshoot. You simply uh, tap the points with your finger, and the train started moving again. You know, you got a bit of a dodgy connection on the um, on the points, and usually it's the the point switch there. There's a little screw. Uh, what I did was I just loosened it and then retightened it, and that fixed the problem with the points. Um, there is another problem with the points over there where the uh, class 31 is uh, sitting. Um, there seems to be uh, I had to use a series three set of points and. It seems to be a bit older, and the, there seems to be some sort of uh, either short or uh, some sort of power problem. So I'm gonna have to troubleshoot that. Um, but generally, that that's usually what the problem is. You either have a bad fish plate, and you're gonna have to uh, maybe uh, jumper it uh, with a piece of wire and some solder, or you're just gonna have to uh, replace the points if they're they're badly gone. But most of the time, it's usually just uh, just dirt, and once you get the dirt off. Um, you should be good to go. Um, so if you see the train uh, sparking a lot, we'll, we'll have uh, a couple of videos of that. It usually indicates that the track is dirty, so uh, that sparking is usually the carbon deposits uh, getting burnt off, I think. So uh, you can uh, easily fix that by simply um, cleaning the track. All right, so uh, we're going to go try to fire up the bull pullman uh, around this a few times, and uh, hopefully. Uh, It'll run, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or need any help uh, getting your triangle train set uh, working again, please feel free to comment on this video, and we'll try to help you out. Okay, yeah, that's the uh, blue Pullman, and I lucked out. It actually decided to run this time. And that whining noise it's making—that's perfectly normal. That's the noise it's supposed to make. Um, 
if you get any kind of weird smells, as long as it doesn't smell like it's burning, uh, most of this little triang stuff will kick off a, more of a carbon smell than we used to with uh, modern locomotives. But then again, that's uh, half the fun. So um, I think that's going to wrap it up. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time.